Today is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. It is also day 177 of Blender, and today I'm going to do another text animation because practice makes better. So I'm going to do it with geometry nodes. I'm going to scroll up. I may actually scroll down and go to geometry nodes, hide the spreadsheet, click on new for new geometry node system, and then I'm going to disconnect the input from the output, and then I'll click on the layout, shift A, not the layout, but the geometry node area, shift A, and then get a string to curves node and put that in there connect it to the output so i'll be able to see it and the reason i don't see anything is because i don't have anything set here so i'm just going to say something random like i don't know like okay and then i will do shift a and get a trans well get a transform node um and make it so that it rotates 90 degrees along the x-axis which in this case is the red one all right and then to give it some fill i'm going to just kind of pull this up a little bit and i'll do shift a and get a fill curve node and put that right in here and i'm going to go to wireframe mode just so i could see that it's very very messy so i could just change the fill type to end gods and that kind of fixes that all right back to solid mode I'm going to do shift A and get an extrude mesh node and put that in here and that's going to extrude the mesh. It's going to give it some thickness, but I like it so that it's 0.1. But if I look at the back, I notice that it's not filled in the back. It's like hollow, right? And so to fix that, I can do shift A, join geometry and put that in here and that's going to join both the extrusion mesh and the fill curve um, node as I set it to be that way. So now it's looking like that. All right, and then I'm just going to go real quick back to the cur um, string to curves and change the font to Arial Black. And that's pretty much it for that. And then maybe I could change the character spacing to 1.15. All right, um, maybe 1.12, something like that. Okay. And that's it for the look of it besides the color. Now, if I want to change a color, I can go here into material properties and change the base color to be just any random color. But I'll notice that it's not going to work because what I'm giving the color to is the cube that we saw in the beginning. Um, and that is basically not the current object that we have right now. That's this. If I were to... Oops. If I were to connect it in the output, then I'll be able to see the cube, and if I go into material preview, I'll be able to see it be pink. That is what we're setting the color here, but that's not what I want. I want the output to be this, and I want the color of that object to be changed. And so I'll do shift A and get a set material node and put that in there, and now I can select the color, um, and now it'll be changed to that color. But I don't want all of my letters to be the same color so i'm going to do control s real quick and save this and today's 8322.blend i'm going to save this over here in did i delete my blender folder all right whatever um and then i'm going to go to shading the shading workspace at the top and i'll wait for a few seconds all right so in the shading workspace i'll be able to see my principal bsdf and a material output and i'll also be able to see my text over here i'm just going to scroll this a little bit up and what i'll need is a shift a color ramp and i'll need a object information node and now i can go into like any like site with like colors and i'm just going to pick random colors and i'm going to select the tag and then click on the color hex and then paste that color in there and I'm going to select a few more colors, maybe this one, and click on the tag, hex, paste that color in there. Now, um, I will connect the color to the base color, so now it's going to end up being kind of like a linear gradient of those colors, but I don't want a linear gradient of the colors. I want basically either to be um, either or color, and so I'll just change this to be constant, and it's going to end up being either or color. But it's only going to do that if it's assigned randomly, so I have to make sure that the object information node random um, attribute is a, it goes into the factor of the color ramp. So it plays a factor into, you know, the assignments of the colors. So beautiful. And then I can go ahead and pick some few, a few more other colors I could just add. 
and um, just go here to the color and change the hex code to whatever color that I need. And then I can also do something like that, change another color, change it to be whatever color like that. Something like that. All right. Um, and that's just like randomly assigned. Um, let me see, maybe this color also. I don't know if I already picked that color. Whoops. Click on new. Oops, I did multiples. Click on new. Something like that. Whatever, I'll leave it like that. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to do control S and then I'm going to go back into my geometry nodes so that I can, you know, work with the animation because it's going to be like a text bounce animation. So back in geometry nodes, I need an object to control the movement of my um, letters. So I'll go into layout and shift A and grab an empty and do a sphere. And then I'll go to object data properties and change the sphere to be a single arrow. And then I'll just kind of... Um, Go to geometry nodes for the object and do shift a and get a translate instances node and put that in there and what this does is that if i move it on the x it translates all my letters left and right if i do y it translates it up and down if i do z it, up, it translates it forward and backward but i don't want all my letters moving at the same time and in the same place and so i'm going to use this controller and i'm actually going to call it controller um or control in my outliner and I'm just going to use that control to literally control the movement of my letters. So I'm going to grab that um, and drag it into here as an object information node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a vector math node, paste that in there and change it to distance. And I'm going to calculate the distance between the controller and the position of each of the letters. So that's going to be one vector and then the location of the controller will be another one and that value of that distance is going to be what's going to determine how the letters are going to translate so notice that they translate now in accordance to the distance that they were um, from the controller so notice if I unselect this and I see that the O and the controller have a distance of zero there's literally zero meters in between them they're right there and so that reflects when I put it in here Obviously, it's not going to move because if the value is zero over here, the distance between the controller and the O is zero, then obviously it's not going to move here in the translation because the translation is then zero. So that's kind of like the math behind that. All right. But it's weird because I don't want it to move like in this way. And so I want it to move like up and down. So I'll do shift A and combine. Whoops, not this one. Let me X that out. Shift A, combine X, Y, Z and put that in here and make sure it's on the Y because that's up and down in geometry nodes, right? And if I go to front view by pressing um, the button under the escape key and hovering over front, I'll be able to see it a little bit nicer. If I just look at it, right, um, the closer I am to the letter, to a letter, the lower it is, and the farther I am from the letter, the higher it is. And I want the opposite effect. I want it to be so that the closer I am to a letter, it's going to start going higher, right? Because I want it to bounce up with my controller. So in order to fix that, I'll do shift A and get a color ramp. And I'm going to put that right in between the combine XYZ. And I'm just going to make sure that I go to the little arrow and flip the color ramp. And now the closer I am to, like the closer the controller is to the letter, the higher it is and the farther away from it, um, from a letter the lower it is which is perfect so now if i move it along the x-axis it's giving like a bounce effect um so that's really good and then what i'll also do is um kind of control how far it bounces so if i were to move this right it kind of only reaches like a certain point kind of like over here and i want it to reach maybe something higher you know and so in order to kind of control that value i can just do shift a and get a math node and put that in here and change that to multiply and change it to whatever value I want like I don't know like one and you can see now that it's like increasing slightly kind of like here and then if I change it to two it's going to increase even more right and now like the maximum is over here um, but I kind of like one so I'll stick with one um, let me just delete these notes all right so that's that and then um, if 
I go over here and I move the controller, I notice as I'm moving the letters, if I just keep my eye on one letter, I notice that it goes up and down at the same speed as I'm moving the controller at a constant speed. Like all the letters go up and down at the same speed. And I want it to be so that, you know, like when you're traveling in a mountain, right, you kind of go up kind of slow and then you like really slow down at the top because your velocity is zero, right? Because you stop or when you're riding a roller coaster or something. You go up, well, yeah, you go kind of slow and then really slow down at the top and then you go fast like at, like as you go down like really fast and so that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I want to replicate right now and I can do that using shift a and get a float curve and put that right here and I can just kind of make it literally the same shape like literally the same shape and I'll be able to now see that as I move at a constant speed it slows down at the top right and whoops and it goes fast as I go down. Oh, you know what I noticed? Interesting, hold on. I think this is supposed to be after the multiply value. Or is it supposed to be before the color ramp? That's what's well, my mistake. I did this before and, huh. Nope, wrong thing. Let me figure this out real quick. Oops. I think it's supposed to be this is the value over here this has no value here maybe the flow curve is supposed to be here now it's going the opposite way oh you know why hold on reset curve Let me see, what am I missing? It's supposed to be... Oops, that's the wrong thing. This is supposed to go here and then... This is supposed to go... Why does it do that? Huh, here? Let's see. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, figured it out. So it's supposed to go after the multiply. And, but didn't, isn't that how I had it? No, right? I had it over here between the multiply. Okay. It's supposed to go after the value is multiplied and the, uh, and before, like, you determine the direction. Okay. Now that's good. And then as I move it, wait, is it still happening? No, it's good. Okay, it's good. All right. As I move it, I can see that bounce effect. All right. So now on to the animation. So if I go into layout, um, let me just delete my notes. All right. Um, let's see. I'll first open up my timeline, press on N. All right. Front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front. GZ to move this a little bit up over here. GX to move it here. All right. So basically I'm going to have a video of 80 frames. And so the first frame I wanted to start right before it starts affecting the letter O. So that's kind of about right here at this um, position in the X axis, which is like negative 1.1865 meters. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over that location. I'm going to press I to insert that location keyframe. And that's going to appear as a location keyframe, like a diamond shape, yellow thing on my timeline. And then um, at the last frame, I wanted to end up like I want the controller to end up all the way at the end um, right after it stops affecting the letter Y. And that's a 3.7751 meters. And so I'm going to insert, I'm going to press, I'm going to hover over that location on the um, end panel and press I to insert that location keyframe. Now, if I go back into one and I press play, I'll be able to see the controller move from the first location to the last location. And that kind of, you know, does the animation. 
All right, so that's just pretty good. Let me go to, um, what do you call it, rendered preview, kind of put this down, and also press N to get away from that. So now, onto the backdrop. So I'll do Shift A, add a plane, S to scale. Um, maybe that's too much. Edit mode by pressing Tab, select the edge, select, select the back edge, E to extrude, Z to extrude on the Z axis, which is the blue axis, which is up and down. Um, and then I will go here in modifiers, add a bevel to have a bevel over here in the edge and just increase the amount on the segments and that's going to make my backdrop. I'm going to apply that and right click shade smooth and then maybe do G to grab it along the X axis, so GX and then GZ to bring it a little bit down so it stops affecting hiding the Y's. Um, so I'll do that and then I'll actually try to find a color for... Um, the what do you call it the um, the background the backdrop so go to material properties click on new and then base color hex paste that in there no it's gonna have to end up being something maybe like this I did I always do blue maybe s x to scale it that way front view No, I need to stop doing blue. I always do blue. Let me try to pick. What if I do white? No. What about green? I do green a lot too. I need to do different colors. No. No. How about this color? Okay, I'm going to come back when I pick a color. Okay, so I ended up liking the way that this looks. This color is 6B, 65, 4B for the hex code. So I'm going to end up with this and now on to aligning like the camera, like the view that I want to render. So I'm going to go front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front. I'm going to kind of go up a little bit and then I'm going to do control alt numpad zero. And um, if you don't, if that doesn't work, go to edit parentheses, preferences, preferences, I can't even say input and then make sure emulate numpad is on if that doesn't work it's probably because you don't have a camera so do shift a and put a camera on your scene all right to get out of this view middle mouse button to go back into the view zero middle mouse button to get out so i'm just going to do a little bit more to the right control alt numpad zero and i kind of like the way that this is looking i can check that like it's all in my scene you know what i just realized i don't think i fixed the issue because it's going back up again that's so weird look at it it's bouncing again. See, I knew that's how, where I had it. Let me see. Why is the flow curve like that? Multiply, value, factor, on the Y. Let me look at my notes. Alright, so I was looking back at day 153 and I think I figured it out. Um, this, I think I was mixing up the shapes. This is supposed to be this shape over here. And then let me see if it works now. Beautiful. Okay. So it's supposed to be this shape, not, um, the other shape. Just to make things clear. All right. My bad. Um, now on to layout. Let me play it again. Okay, now it's looking good. Alright, pretty. So now onto the rendering part. So I'll go to output properties and select, go to output and select the folder that I want my stuff to be in. So I'm just going to create, um, what's today's date? 8 3 22 animation. I'm going to say okay put that in there and all of my 80 um, frames are going to be rendered as png images um, in that folder and so i'm just gonna do Control s and then render 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 nope 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 render animation not render image let me go back render animation and then i'll be able to see those 80 images in that folder pretty soon let me just open it up Where's my stuff? Um, I don't know what happened to my other folder. 
All right, so you can see that the first two images are rendering and it's so on and so on. All right, um, I'll come back. All right, so I'm basically able to see all of the 80 frames rendered in this folder. So I'll just X out of that and X out of this too. And I'll go here to the top, scroll down, plus sign, video editing, video editing, and scroll this all the way to the left um, if it's not there already. And then I'll add image sequence and then I'll go to that folder that I had and I'll select the first one. And then I'll go scroll down, shift, select the last one, and then I'll add the image strip. And then um, I'll select the location that I want the video to render. I'll just create a new folder inside the images, accept that. I want it to render in the format of FFMPEG video. Um, under encoding, I need to change the container to MPEG4, so it's MP4. Um, and also output quality should be high quality under the video which is under encoding all right and so if that's done i do control s and scroll up render render animation and i should be able to see that video in the location that i told it to go to so let me pull that up real quick And I'll just wait a few more seconds until it's done rendering. Alright, it's done, so I'm going to open it up. And I'll be able to see the video, and this is the final result. And I'll kind of repeat it, play that a few more times. And that's it. Alright, that's it for today. Bye.